Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to FTD Speaks. This video is of Liam Neeson and he's talking about Islam and his interest in it. And you guys have wanted me to react to this for quite some time. So I'm doing that right now. I was totally captivated by it. Loved it. So then I thought maybe Islam's the answer. It really makes me think about Islam is becoming the answer. Muslim. We'll be discussing that hmm. and also revisiting Liam Neeson's trip that he did years ago to Turkey. Yeah, so you have been traveling a lot, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this movie takes place in Istanbul. Istanbul, not Turkey. And how yeah. was that? We'll also touch upon the, and then? You could send your soul and yeah. begin the most magnificent wake up. All right, you guys ready? I thought this was very important. Now, we all knew about the trip that Liam Neeson, who's Liam Neeson? Liam Neeson is a very, very famous actor. He's from Irish descent, and he is known for some films, I believe he was filming Taken 2 in Turkey. That was some time ago. That was years ago, actually. And the word got around that he was considering accepting Islam. Well, maybe Islam's the answer. Really makes me think of it becoming a Muslim. So let's get into this clip. Let's watch it again. There's another part to it that I never seen until now. Someone sent it to me. So that's what had me want to revisit this and go ahead and derive some benefits from it. So let's get into the clip. And this movie takes place in Istanbul. Istanbul, not Turkey. And how yeah. was that? It was uh, beautiful. It's, it's a stunning city. It mm -hmm. used to be in the old days known as Constantinople. Mm -hmm. It's the gateway between the West and the East. Right. It's rich culturally, historically, and there are 4,000. So he's uh, talking about his trip. He was filming a movie, a film in Turkey. And one point from here that we can derive from people who've been fed a lot of this hate about Muslims. And if you go to a predominantly Muslim country and you're a not yet Muslim, a non-Muslim, that you're going to get your head chopped off. You're going to all sorts of evil is going to happen to you. Uh, do what he did, do what many have done, visit a predominantly Muslim country and see how you're treated. I mean, talk to people, get out of your comfort zone, get out of your village, get out of your uh, local area, your block and travel. This is uh, another way to eradicate some of this anti-Islamism, this anti-Muslim fear that many people have. Connect. And right. If you can't leave your town or if you can't leave your city, uh, visit a mosque, visit some Muslims. So let's continue on. And the call to prayer starts at 5 a.m. every morning. So when you have your alarm clock set for 6 a.m., it's uh, the first week it was a bit annoying. Do you get used to it? But by the second week, Alan, it just gets into your soul and yeah. became the most magnificent. Uh, here's a beautiful thing. Uh, we can, beautiful. Oh, if that's... you don't know, now you know. He was talking about the call to prayer. This is the Adan. He was hearing it. And he was just in the beginning because he would set his alarm clock for six. But then the adhan, the call to prayer, would go off at about four. And this is the first Muslims. Uh, remember, Muslim is one who submits his or her will because every person wants to have peace, contentment, solace in life. I mean, so when a person realizes what their purpose in life is and they connect to the one who created this world and tells them what their purpose and they strive, they sincerely, humbly try to live that purpose, that per person is considered a Muslim, one who only submits to God, to the creator of heavens and earth. So then he's seeing, he's talking about how uh, he would hear this adhan, the call to prayer, and then at first it was just annoying. But then it, it just got into his heart, it got into his soul. Mm. So you guys, most of you have seen this, and then I'll get to the part soon, which is the new part for me at least. Well, this is what he was hearing. Just said it says God is the greatest Allah God Almighty Allah just simply means God the God the only one worthy of worship so he would hear this he would hear that then and it just saying that God is the greatest God is the greatest there's nothing worthy of worship except God except the creator of the heavens and the earth uh, so then we move on and this is the clip now that I wanted to get into but the Muslim call to prayer starts at like five o'clock in the morning so it's an extraordinary sound wow so the first week it was like Second week, it was like, oh, it's kind of quite nice. But the third week, I, I was totally captivated by it. Loved it. So then I thought, maybe 
Islam's the answer. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't see any prayer rugs around, so I, haven't, I don't think you've made the leap. You know? No, I haven't made the big leap, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what they'd think in Ballymena. That wouldn't get down very well. <laughs> that would not. They'd say, oh, Muslim, are you a Catholic Muslim or a Protestant Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> that's where that would be. No, that's really what caught my attention. Loved it, captivated it. It's just the same story. He's repeating it, but this time to Anderson Cooper. So I wanted to take this time now to hopefully that many of us can get on board and we can go ahead and try to revive what possibly Liam Neeson lost at that time and many people because anything worthwhile takes effort. It takes effort. Yeah. So at that time, Liam Neeson, he experienced something and then he came back home to share his experience. And you saw he was on different TV channels, the Ellen Show, the Anderson Cooper interview and others. And there was a talk about him potentially accepting Islam. We just finished in Istanbul. We were there for two months, just before Christmas. Beautiful city, unbelievable place. And the call to prayer happens five times a day. And for the first week, it drives you crazy. And then it just gets into your spirit. It's the most beautiful, beautiful thing. And these mosques, there's 4,000 mosques in the city. Some of them are just they're stunning. Thousand. It really makes me think of it. So Becoming long. a Muslim. Becoming a Muslim. Becoming a Muslim. That was the talk of the town. But you can imagine how much heat and how much pressure would be on someone of that magnitude accepting Islam. Again, just to qualify what Islam means. Again, Islam simply means to acquire peace. Everything you, I, everyone wants in life, peace. And the only way a person is going to have that true peace and contentment in life when everything is going wrong, when everything's upside down, because there's no perfect life. There's no paradise in this life. Paradise is for the next life. But when a person is living purpose, that's when they get that peace. And that's what Islam is. It calls a person to have peace with their creator by submitting his or her will to the one who created creation, the one and only creator of the heavens and earth, God Almighty, Allah. That's what Islam is. So Liam Neeson was considering that. He was considering accepting Islam. He said, maybe is Islam the answer? I was totally captivated by it. Loved it. So then I thought maybe Islam's the answer. It really makes me think about becoming a Muslim. But the question is, what if it is the answer? And we know 100% without a doubt, Islam is the answer. Submission to the creation is not the answer, but submission, if we rephrase it, to the creator is the answer. So we want to take this opportunity and invite Liam Neeson to come back to that original state when he was there, when he was there in Turkey, he was experienced that and compare and same thing for everyone out there, yes. someone who had some exposure to Islam or someone who is just looking. They look and, and remember this. Look, you don't like scream and fuss when someone's inviting you to something bad. When someone's inviting you to go to the nightclub, to go to a pub, to a bar, you don't scream at that person. So when somebody's inviting you, when your friend or your neighbor, your colleague, when someone is inviting you to the most beautiful thing that you can do to have a connection with the creator of the heavens and earth, to live your true purpose in life, you should feel a sense of, of happiness that this person has actually called me to something good, something great. So all of us can be a part of that to help get this to any individual out there who's seeking peace and purpose, especially our friend Liam Neeson, who I'm sure at that time was really considering accepting Islam. So now you guys heard the statement that whatever you focus on, it grows. And whatever you neglect, hmm. it withers and dies. So now at that time, Very or true. at this time, you right now, you've considered like, okay, I've experimented everything. You're not even at that level of Neon Neeson where you've been in all these films, you got all this money and, and all the, the pleasures of this life open up in front of you. But maybe you've had those things, you were dreaming about those things. You might not ever acquire those things. Maybe you have, I, I don't know. But you, there is one thing that you are, you're tired. You're exhausted. You really want to know what's your purpose in life? Why am I here? Everything around you has a purpose. What about the human being? So we invite Liam Neeson to go back to that state, how he was feeling then. Because time has passed and the person is just getting closer to their DD departure date. And it's really time to think like, how many more movies am I going to make? How many more Grammy events am I going to be invited to? How many more fake people are, am I going to be around? Uh, how many more nightclubs am I going to go to? How many times am I going to go get drunk and have hangovers? And uh, how many men, how many women I'm going to be with? And how much money does it take to make me happy? At the end of the day, nothing will truly fill your heart with peace, contentment, solace. Is, is, it's, it's only when you connect your heart back to the creator of the heart. When you connect your heart back to the creator of the heavens and earth. And when you start living purpose. And I'm not talking about taking the means because there are many means 
to the ultimate purpose, uh, to have a family. That's one of the means uh, to make a honest day's living is one of the means. But I'm talking about to really live life according to how your creator wants you to live. And back to that statement, whatever you focus on grows. Imagine now when you're given that opportunity, like right now or Liam Neeson at, at that time. And a lot of times we have that mentality, that like winning team mentality. And we have the truth is always being attacked. Islam is always being attacked. So now you feel like, okay, what are people going to say? So time still goes on and people forget. But you traded off. You sold your soul. You sold yourself more for what? For fame, for money, for popularity, rather than that that treasure was presented in front of you. And how many people, they lose that treasure because they're more worried. Is that group think mentality? What my friends foes are going to say if I go down this direction. I'm not sure what they think in Balamina. That wouldn't get done very well. <laughs> that would not. They'd say, oh, Muslim. Are you a Catholic Muslim or a Protestant Muslim? <laughs> so nobody's perfect. Practice makes progress. So it'll take some time, little baby steps. Start to leave off some of the vices, some of the things that you know are not good for you. Start forming a direct connection with your creator by asking the creator for guidance, mm. for guidance. And start surrounding yourself by good people who will be a, a good example around you. Cut off the bad friends. Cut off the bad company. Cut off the ba bad places that you know you shouldn't be around. And start to clean up your life. And break the biggest idol that can be you most of the time, your ego. And really humble yourself. And then start looking into Islam. Really look at Islam. Look what Islam is all about. Look what Islam calls you to. Take a look at it. Just humbly, sincerely. So get to know Islam. Get to look into Islam. So I just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was very, very important. And the key message, when the truth comes to you, take advantage of it. It came to him at that time. He was in a Muslim country. It really touched his heart. The Adhan. And in the Adhan, the purpose of life is mentioned that there's nothing worthy of worship. That's that first statement. Except the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah. And Muhammad is his slave, servant, and final messenger. So get to know what this statement means. Get to know Islam from the correct sources, not from people who are perpetuating hate and misinformation, and tune into the Dean Show. So hopefully you can grow and learn the pure monotheism that the Creator calls the human being through Islam to have, and that system of living a morally upright life, the blueprint for life that's all there in Islam. So Liam Neeson, hopefully God willing, some of the Dean Show fans can get this message to him and others who are really searching to know what their purpose in life is, why they're here, and where they're going, most importantly, when they leave this world. Because at the end of this journey, there is a paradise and there is a hellfire. So what we live for in this life will determine where we're going in the next life. So we ask God Almighty to guide us, all of us, so we can live a beautiful, pure life, a life how God Almighty wants us to live in this life, so we can get the wonderful rewards of Jannah Paradise in the next, and we can avoid the hellfire thank you very much subscribe again to the dean show hit that notification bell like this video help us get this out to our friend liam neeson and others and support us on our patreon page we'll see you next time peace be with you assalamu alaikum it's crazy how something can go from being so annoying and hating it to i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to hearing it and uh, okay, I know that the Adhan isn't music, it's not singing or anything like that, but that's the closest thing I can compare it to. And uh, uh, Liam Neeson was saying, like, you know, he has his alarm clock set. And, he, you know, just like I'm sure most of us, we don't like being woken up before our alarm clock goes off. It's worse when you get up in the morning and it's like, a minute before your clock goes up, you're like, oh my God, I could have slept for a minute longer. <laughs> you know that feeling. And for him though, it's just like after a couple of weeks of hearing that on every single day, he was like, okay, you know what? Maybe, you know, this is, this is good. It's like, it's, it's speaking to me. And I, I assume that he learned what the Arabic words meant. Uh, but even still, the Adan kind of does that to you. Like I, I've listened to the Adan and it's like there's like a calming feeling that that happens it's uh it's pretty cool so with um with the the, the guy from the dean show uh, as a matter of fact this, this show's been going on for a long time i remember reacting to a dean show clip from so long ago good to see that he's still doing his thing and he's uh he stepped up his game production wise and he's he's still he's still making videos but uh i see like exactly what he's talking about you know sometimes 
uh, people they go through like these experiences and it's like hmm maybe or like i'm considering this and then after some time goes on it's like oh yeah it kind of it kind of vanishes so i i see the, the importance of that and who knows if liam neeson even saw that video or his fans uh helped share that video i know liam neeson is a busy guy traveling all around the world always acting i swear he's been in a movie every single year that i can remember <laughs> he's everywhere you know, so definitely a busy guy. I also really liked how he shared the information in this uh, video. It was just straight up, you know, he was like, well, if you found this and it spoke to you, explore it. You know, there's so many misconceptions about the religion. And if you give it a chance, you're going to see that it's completely different than what the media is making it out to be. Uh, I think he presented it in a very uh, great way. It wasn't anything that was, you know, forceful or uh, offensive or anything like that. It was just literally just laying it out and he was sharing it from his heart. So I really liked the Dean Show's uh, approach for sure. Um, definitely a lot to to think about after this one so much is in this video but uh that's where i'm going to end off hopefully you enjoyed it leave a like if you did and don't forget to check out some of our other related videos i'll link to them in the video description section as well and if you have any more videos like this or not like this that you want me to react to just follow me on instagram i'll link to that below as well where you can DM me and I'll get to your video as quickly as I can, guys. All right, see you in the next one. Later.